much, uh, Mega, for this invitation. Um, in fact, we are not coming in order. The one who came before me, may I, I may sound like John the Baptist, and the one who's coming after me, they are my elder brothers. Yesterday was my eldest brother. And um, the other one who's coming tomorrow is my second brother. And I am sandwiched between two role models, excellent role models. And, um, but I always take that comfort, that which is between the sandwich is always the tastier one. Um, I have a sister, you know, when my brothers were born, maybe the Lord thought my parents should have some breathing time and brought in my sister. And then I was born and I'm sure in my growing up years, I have taught my parents many lessons on prayer on knees. And uh, after seeing me, they would have said it is finished. But the Lord picks up these finished things. And I want to thank God for my parents, simple people who taught us simple things. Church attendance, absolutely important. Sunday school, important. Family prayer. You know, I still remember my dad. It doesn't matter what time it is. Family prayer, he will literally carry me from the bed in the same position, bring me to the hall and carry me in the same position, put me in the bed and insisted. And now looking at our own families, we say, my parents were simple people, but they insisted on family prayer. But now we are missing out on so much. And I want to thank God for my brothers, my sister, and uh, thank God for all of you, for the Open Up team, for the privilege. Let me start out with a story. Have you seen a baby camel and a mother camel go for a walk? They had a long conversation. But since you don't understand the conversation, just listen to what I'm saying. The baby camel looked at the mother camel and said, Mommy, why are we having such broad legs? You know, like a cobweb. The mother said, that is for us to walk in the desert. Then the baby camel looked at the mother and said, Mama, why do we have these double backs? Look at the other animals. The mother said, that is for us to store up food while we walk through the desert. Then the baby said, Mommy, then why do we have long eyelids? He says, that is for us to prevent us from the dust storm. God made it that way. The baby camel kept quiet, went walking some more distance, then looked at the mother and said, then why are we staying in the zoo? If God has prepared us for the desert walk, why are we staying in the zoo? If God has got a different purpose in your life and my life, why are we living a different kind of a life? And so this evening, I want to draw our attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 1 to chapter 3, verse 4. It's a long passage. We will not read it, but then as I come across these verses, we will look at it. Paul planted this church in Corinth, and after a few years, he received a lot of complaints, a lot of letters, and a lot of questions. The church was troubled with division, lawsuits between believers, sexual sins, disorderly worship, and Paul started writing to them and asking them to reflect on godliness. But before I go into the text, I want you to see what Paul said. Look at verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. You know what Paul is saying? I am not coming to impress you. I am not coming to say that you will pat on my back and say good preaching. Whether you like it or not, I have to say what God wants me to say. There is no sugar coating. That's why I like when you read the Old Testament, you'll find the Lord spoke to Moses. Moses told the people, thus says the Lord. God spoke to Moses. Moses told the people, thus says the Lord. You know what it means? Whatever you're telling me, O Lord, I am telling the others. There is nothing in between. And that is what Paul is telling the church at Corinth. I am not coming with eloquence. 
I am not coming with beautifully framed, you know, homiletic uh, points, even though that is good. But I am coming with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And I think that is the need of the hour. I still remember pastoring the church. I normally preach for about 30, 35 minutes. But that Sunday, when I, you know, I start preparing from Monday, but Monday was blank, Tuesday was blank, Wednesday was blank. And I remember, you know, the Lord gave me the text I prepared and went and stood on the pulpit. I couldn't even proceed after 15 minutes. Nothing came to my mind. I'm having my notes, total blackout. And the Lord reminded me this. It is not how well you prepare the sermon, how well you deliver, but how much time you spend in my presence that matters. All this is good. It's a good thing to prepare. I think it is important for us to wait on the Lord to depend. But sometimes we find all these frills, dim light so that we can come into a mood of worship. You know, we have these black cats accompanying us so that we will know that we have a massive crowd. Friends, please understand. It is just not eloquence. It is not just the way we do it. And sometimes when we go, there are big cutouts. And the cutout is bigger than the normal height of the preacher. And all that, what is it doing? And we don't see any difference outside. I think my Bible is absolutely clear. He must increase. I must decrease. He should be known. Because you know what Paul is saying? That Look at verse 5. So that people should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In the last days, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, you'll read, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their reaching, itching ears want to hear. And that's just what is happening. Nothing different from those days. Even now. You know, I know there will be many counselors here. I'm sure you would have come across a lot of people who come to you for counseling. But when people come to you for counseling, if you and I think, Appa, they have chosen the best counselor, we are mistaken. You know, they come to us because they've gone up to about 10 people before us. They did not get the answer what they like to hear. And so they're coming to us so that we will give them the answer what is suitable to them. And my friends, you and I need to be aware of the danger these days. We will not play into the hands of the audience. We will be waiting on the Lord and say, speak, Lord, for your servant here. And so Paul, when he's writing, he realized there are three kinds of people. Verse 14 of chapter 2. He talks about the natural man. In chapter 3, verse 1, he talks about the carnal man. And then in chapter 2, verse 6, he talks about the mature man. Now, three standards of living. The natural man indicates substandard living. The carnal man indicates the low standard living. The mature man indicates a true standard of living. And we will go through one by one. And this evening it's our prayer that we will wait upon the Lord and say, Lord, show me where I am. It is not for me to point out to others and say, oh, they are a low standard, substandard, and no. It is for us to say, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, it is me, O oh Lord, speak to me this evening. Lord, I want to know where I stand. So let's look at the first one, the substandard living. Chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The first one, Paul is saying, these people are natural people, they don't understand spiritual things. Why? The spiritual things will be revealed only by the Spirit of God in them. And because they do not have the Spirit of God, everything is foolishness to them. 
It's very straightforward in Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Only he who has the Spirit of God belongs to Christ. In other words, he's saying, now remember, he is talking to people who are going to church. He's talking to Christians. You do not have the Spirit. If you do not have the Spirit in you, you don't belong to Christ. And because you do not have the Spirit in you, everything that is spiritual is foolishness. Have you come across people who said, waste Bible study? What is the use of all night prayer? What is the use of fasting and prayer? What is the use of a retreat? Now, nothing makes sense to them. And the substandard living is characterized by blindness. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Natural man. We don't want to spend more time on this. The Bible is very clear. In first, in first John, C.B. Samuel spoke about it yesterday. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Now it is very clear. And I believe this open up is not for us to be entertained. Not because we do not have anything. We are wasting our time. And we are getting bored, working from home, being finding tired, and so open up started. I believe open up has started not to entertain us, but to enrich us and to bring us to that salvation experience. And so this evening, you and I need to make that decision whether I have the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, when we receive the Lord, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And so here is a substandard living. Those who do not belong to Christ and yet are members of the church who are actively involved. They are all involved in the planning, in the social gatherings, potluck, dinner, VBS, everything. But that's all right. But actively involved in the church does not mean we belong to Christ. Not even giving more to the church will reveal that we belong to Christ. The Bible is very clear. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. He who belongs, he who has the Son, has life. And these are blind. People, substandard living is characterized by blindness. They don't see any value in anything spiritual. Even maybe in this open up. Ah. Boring. How can we sit and listen to LT, CB, J. Kumar, and Finney and others? Oh, it's too much. They don't see anything valuable, spiritual in this. These are natural people who have a substandard living characterized by blindness. The second kind of living Paul talks about is a low standard living in chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Please keep that passage open. And look at verse 2. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. Please note these words. Could not, until now, even now, still not, able. Paul is writing to the Christians in Corinth, substantive, substandard living is marked by blindness. Low standard living is marked by weakness. Three things that are evident of people with low standard living. He says, I came to you and you could not until now you're the same. Even now you're the same, still not able. And I think Paul is speaking from his heart. And may I place before you three evident things for those who have this low standard living. First one, they don't grow. They don't grow. These people prefer to live 
on the basis of Christian life. These are the people for their quiet time. Golden text calendar is enough. These are the people. Their quiet time is just, you know, I always tell people, I'm surprised for some of us, God always speaks only from Psalms and not the other books of the Bible. These people who are low standard living are people who do not want to make an effort to study the word by themselves. And Paul is saying, I am feed, I'm not able to feed you by solid meat. The choice not to grow, to remain as babies, as infants, is not someone else's. It's your choice and my choice. Because it takes an effort to study God's word. And Paul is saying, I don't see any development in you. My friends, it's for all of us, including me. From the time we made a commitment to the Lord, is my commitment going up or is it coming down? Don't believe when people say you can stand on the same place. No, either we come down or we go up. As my understanding of God increased, as my prayer life become more meaningful, do I have the thirst to study God's word? Have we graduated in having more deeper quiet time? Infants, look at the words he's using, babies, infants who are helpless, who need to be taught. In other words, don't be child, just grow, don't be childish, grow. And we need to ask, have we grown in our understanding of God? Even in this open up, I think it is 101 days. Am I right? 101, 102. All these days. Wonderful teaching from great men of God, P.K. De Lee, Valentine, all these people who come, the other names, I do not know. Have we grown in our understanding or are we saying every evening there is something for me to be occupied? That's what he's saying. Low standard living are people who are not willing to grow, to open the word and say, Lord, speak. You know who these low standard living, who the infants are? Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in the deceitful scheming. Look at what Paul is saying to the church at Ephesus. Infants, you're no longer infants, toss up and down. Friends, we are living at a time, we have lots of false teaching coming in. And if you and I are not strong in the word of God, we will be swayed, we will be tossed by this teaching. And we will be taken off our feet, not being able to hold on at the time when we really want to. And that is why the word of God is absolutely necessary for us to study so that no matter which congregation it is, it could be any denomination. We don't blindly accept what is said in the pulpit. We come back and check with the word of God if it is true. Low standard living are people who don't grow. These are people who live from convention to convention. Retreats to retreats, in between there is nothing. Camps to camps, where is the next camp? And every altar call, they are there to raise their hands. We need to be careful. Are we low standard living people? Where we have not studied the word for ourselves. We have not learned to pray alone. Now what Paul is saying is, it's not that you are spiritual and you stay spiritual. There are moments. We come into carnal, and then from carnal, we move into being spiritual. This happens. But what he's surprised is being spiritual to see this carnal and fleshy ones who are dominated by it and not by Christ. And so he says, low standard living people, one, they don't grow. The second thing he says, they don't know. They don't know the scripture. It's like in the Sunday school. 
when the teacher asked who what what are the epistles and the boy said the epistles are the wives of the apostles and my friends sometimes i have seen we look into the text may i say this i i trust that we are not here this evening but there are many who still do not know the books of the bible and they always go i'm not saying to by heart but they always go to the index to find out where habakkuk is where zephaniah is sometimes you and i need to ask lord do i know what the word says they lack discernment and hebrews the writer to the hebrews talks about six warnings if you have your pencil and pen you can take down we don't have time to explain it but he talks about the six warnings the first one is in chapter 2 chapter 2 look at verse 3 he warns against drifting how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation he is warning about christians drifting away second he talks about departing from the truth hebrews chapter 3 hebrews chapter 3 look at verse 12 beware brethren lest there be in any of you an evil art of unbelief in departing from the living god second warning look at the third warning in hebrews the warning against disobedience chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 but let me read verse 11 let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest lest any one fall according to the same example of disobedience four this is where maybe some of us can identify maybe there are others who said yeah i slowly drifting away there is disobedience and uh, i have slowly departing from the truth i departed i have come back but the fourth one he says warning against dullness we are dull of hearing in chapter 5 verse 11 of whom we have much to say and hard to explain so since you have become dull of hearing do we hear when the lord speaks or have i become dull of hearing sluggish the fifth one he says he warns against despising the truth chapter 10 Look at verse twenty-six. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice of sins. Look at verse thirty-five. Therefore, do not cast your confidence, which has great reward. And then in chapter twelve, he warns against defying the Lord. In chapter twelve, verse twenty-five. See that you do not refuse him. who speaks so the ones who do not grow the ones who don't know need to be careful and it could be any of us in our moments of lonely loneliness in our moments of frustration of the challenges we go through maybe the lord should not look at us and say i have been speaking to you but you have not been listening you have not been here able to hear my voice they don't grow they don't know and thirdly you find they don't show verse 3 verse 3 hebrews i'm sorry acts uh, 1st corinthians chapter 2 verse chapter 3 verse 3 for you are still carnal for where there are envy strife and divisions among you 
are you not careful carnal and behaving like mere men look at what paul is saying you are behaving like mere men people are not able to identify to make a distinction if you are a child of god or not because what is there in mere men is there in your life look at verse three envy strife and divisions among you now envy and jealousy is different envy is is a reaction to lacking something for example if someone sings i envy that person saying i wish i can sing that like like that person jealousy is a reaction to the threat of losing something where i have been singing every time open up comes i have been singing and giving special number for the last six months they found someone new and so i am jealous of that person that is what it is there is a difference between envy and jealousy envy is a reaction to lacking something jealousy is a reaction to the threat of losing something and paul says it is so visible in the early church in the church at corinth i do not know this evening if some of us are carrying that bitterness that jealousy that unforgiving spirit look at what james says in james chapter 3 james chapter 3 verse 13 james 3 13 who among you is wise and intelligent let him be let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with gentleness and humility of true wisdom but if you are bitter if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not be arrogant and be in defiance of the truth this wisdom is not that which comes down from above verse 16 for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist there is disorder and every evil thing and morally degrading practice but the wisdom from above is first pure you know what james is saying there are two kinds of wisdom divine wisdom and demonic wisdom and he's saying when you have this envy strife division jealousy and bitterness you are behaving we are behaving like mere men and i just a few days back was lt j chandran spoke about the testimony in the marketplace how do people look at us when they rub us on the wrong side how do they watch us when we go through that kind of irritation in our life and that's what you read here when we go through struggles are we prepared to show christ or are we carnal are we behaving like mere men even at home you know i travel a lot those days not this time with the lockdown and my train arrives at bangalore at 4 45 in the morning and if you know bangalore you will know that you know the auto drivers they pounce on you as if they've been waiting only for you the whole night and they carry your suitcase and they carried my suitcase they kept it inside the auto and then they only then they asked me where i go and uh, i told them i had to go to richmond town they said 75 rupees i kept the suitcase outside and i said 60 rupees he kept it inside and he said 70 rupees i kept it outside and i said 60 rupees 4 45 in the morning i lost my cool the best time for a christian to get angry early morning because nobody's watching i lost my cool i told him don't touch my suitcase but anyway we compromised that 15 minutes journey i shouted he shouted well, because shouting in india is free you don't have to pay for it he shouted i shouted i told him because of you only india is like this he said because of you only poor people like us are suffering so he shouted i shouted and my destination came i said turn left he stopped in front of richmond town church 
He said, what is this? I said, church, go inside. He said, why? I said, because my house is inside. He said, why have they given you house? I said, because I'm working in the church. He said, what are you working as? I said, I'm the pastor. He said, I am Namaskara. My name is Joseph. He did not know I was a Christian. I do not know he's a Christian. Substandard living is characterized by blindness. Low standard living is characterized by weakness. I don't grow. I don't know. And I don't show Christ in me. In the marketplace, it's I just hide it. I don't like the testimony. What will others see? So I keep it to myself. My neighbors do not know. The only time they know is when the star comes out and the Christmas tree comes out. This evening, we need to ask, where am I? Have I made my testimony very clear in the place where I'm working? What sort of a living do I have? What sort of a living as my children see? If substandard living is characterized by blindness, low standard living is characterized by weakness. The third, true standard living is characterized by completeness. Chapter 2, verse 6 and 8. 6 to 8. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The substandard living is characterized by blindness. True standard living, the low standard living is characterized by weakness. True standard living is characterized by completeness, marked by maturity and intimacy with God. Maturity and intimacy with God. Paul is saying that we as children of God must grow into spiritual maturity. A mature person is one who's who's got a desire to be Christ-like. We are not perfect people, but we are people who are walking towards perfection. It is not falling down. It is every time we fall, we get up and walk, but it's to remain in that fallen condition that is dangerous. But the question this evening is, how do I grow spiritually? You know, if you must do a study in the Bible where it says, one thing I lack, one thing I do. In Psalm 27 verse 4, the psalmist says, one thing have I desired, that I will seek after him, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. In Luke chapter 10 verse 42, but one thing is needful, and that Mary got it. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, Paul says, I could not myself i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do and so a mature person will be faithful in spiritual discipline again do a study when you have your own time on how many times the word daily comes in the bible and let me highlight few for us who have a desire for all of us this evening who have a desire to grow in the lord to have this daily exercise. You know, because of this lockdown, those who are very conscious, who have been meticulous in their walking every day, have not lost that opportunity to walk, but they're having this exercise in the TV. You know, they watch and they do the exercise at home. Like that, the spiritual discipline is essential. In Psalm 145, verse 2, the psalmist is saying, I will worship the Lord daily. It need not be a location, but every day I will spend time in the presence of the Lord. You know, in my office, she has retired from my office, but 
we know that she has come to the office because as she walks, she comes singing. And when she goes from one department to the other department, so we need not even call her. We say, oh, she has come. She has marked her attendance. In other words, I'm saying our worship, our life should not be one of thanksgiving. Our life should be one of thanks living. A life of worship. Secondly, you find in Acts chapter 2, verse 47, it is not only a daily worship, but a daily witness. A daily witness. But he's saying, no, I'm not used to telling people about Christ. I think we need to pray saying, Lord, untie my tongue. Give me an opportunity for me to just say and leave these words. I am fortunate. I am lucky. But to say God's grace, the Lord has answered. The Lord has been so good to me. An opportunity to tell them about Christ. Daily worship, daily witness, and Psalm 24, 27 verse 4. Where the psalm is saying, I have decided this one thing to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Lord, keep me in the center of your will. 24 bar 7, that I will celebrate you. And then he talks about in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, daily renewal. Daily renewal. For which cause we faith not, but though our outward man perish, yet inward man is renewed day by day. A commitment where he'll come to the Lord and says, Lord, things I have done, things I have not done. Lord, you know it. I lay myself at the altar, O oh Lord. Take it. Take my life and let it be. Lord, the broken pieces I do recognize. Daily worship, daily witness, daily indwell, daily dwelling, daily renewal, daily grace. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Friends, I don't know whether I told you, the last few months, we have been tossed in our organization, losing a loved one. My senior staff, leaving behind three children. One after the other. And may I say this, your living and my living has nothing to do with our merit. Purely his grace and mercy. Lord, I live by your grace, O Lord. Help me not to abuse that grace, but be thankful to you. And then daily submission. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. But let me show this one person in the Bible whom I just love. I love to do a character study on his life. Turn with me to Acts chapter 6. His name is Stephen. His name is Stephen. He's a full man. If you look into the Bible, you'll say, Stephen, full of wisdom, full of grace, full of faith, full of spirit, full of scripture. In other words, a mature man is a man who is full of grace, full of faith full of scripture. And you find all these qualities, wisdom, grace, faith, spirit, and scripture, all these things, you can see him displayed in his relationship with people. In other words, these things are not qualities to be possessed, but qualities to be displayed in our relationship with people. Even while he was stoned, he did not gaze at the persecutors or the stone falling on the side. But the Bible says he gazed at the Lord. And you know what, friends? Look at the mature man. Even at his death, even in his death, his life was such a witness and the life of Paul transformed. Because Paul said, I stood there and I watched. If you look at Acts chapter 6, Look at that verse, Acts chapter 6. The Bible says, they watched him intently. I think it's the last verse. Acts chapter 6, verse 15. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. 
they did everything to him they just watched him intently to see if he is going to reflect the grace of god our testimony is so important substandard living characterized by blindness low standard living characterized by weakness true standard of living characterized by completeness let me close with this the boy went to sunday school first day in school sunday school and he came back and his mother asked him son how was the sunday school he told the story to his mother and then the mother said son who's the teacher son the boy said i don't know mommy but she looks like the grandmother of jesus because the whole 45 minutes she spoke only about jesus what a statement what a statement looks like she's the grandmother of jesus 45 minutes she spoke only about him friends i finished what is your standard of living and my standard of living as a preacher of the word am i putting on or am i growing in the lord i don't grow i don't know i don't show is a lifestyle of a carnal a natural man doesn't have christ at all but a complete a mature man is a man who grows in maturity and intimacy with the lord shall we pray lord you know where we stand in our relationship with you we don't have much to say but to ask oh lord if there is anything that is hindering our growth lord remove it if i do not have the will to know and to grow and to show lord i pray that you will minister to me that you will remove that envy strife and division and jealousy and bitterness and anger that we will not be mere men but lord we will reflect your love and your presence in our lives lord enable us to reflect you wherever you you, you have placed us let people know that we are your disciples in jesus name we pray amen Thank you.